Okay, we are back for chapter 9 of Whatever After Spill the Beans. And chapter 9 is called Saving Prince. So remember, they, Abby and Jonah and Jack, traded Prince for the magic beans. And the uh, magician or the person who traded the magic beans for Prince said that he wanted five gold coins in exchange for Prince. So now Abby and Jonah and Jack are going to go back to get Prince. However, we know that Abby and Jonah always encounter some sort of trouble in these fairy tales. So my prediction is that either they're not going to be able to find the guy that has Prince, or he's going to say, you took too long, so I'm not going to get Prince back. So my prediction is something's going to go very wrong when they try to get Prince back. Which means... We're in the version of the story I know. Ooh, so Abby does know the version. And if the giant didn't kill Jack's dad or steal his money, then Magnus's gold coins belong to him and Philippa and only to them. Which makes sense. Why would Jack's dad have giant-sized coins anyway? So we stole the coins from perfectly nice giants who were probably saving up to go on vacation or something. Although they did want to eat us. Maybe. They didn't actually try to eat us. One of them only sang a song about eating us. Is that just as bad? On the plus side, in the version we're in, Jack probably doesn't marry a princess. So maybe one day. Focus, Abby, focus. So I guess that means we're thieves, Jonah whispers to me. But for a good cause, I remind him, we still need five gold coins to save Prince. And it's not like we can lug the sack of gold coins back up the beanstalk, right? Let's go get Prince right now, Jonah, Jonah says. What's clear is that neither of us wants to think too long or too hard about the situation. We have to save our dog. I nod. I untie the top of the burlap sack. Wow, there must be hundreds of gold coins in here. And the giant has so many more bags, Jonah says, so he surely won't miss one measly bag. Maybe, but still. So we should count them and split them three ways, Jack asks. Ooh, Jonah says excitedly, but I nudge him. You really are sweet, I tell Jack, but Jonah and I only need five. The rest are for you. I reach in and take out five gold coins for Prince. Wow, are you sure? Jack says. Awesome. Thank you. It's, it'll just, I'll just wheel this wheelbarrow inside and lock it up in the closet. Be right back. He rushes the wheelbarrow into the house and comes out again. My mom's not home. She left a note that she's visiting a friend. I can't wait to show her the gold coins. Jonah grins. Now let's go untrade Prince. The three of us hurry along the gravel road toward town. It's afternoon, so the town is crowded with people, and the market is even more crowded. I try to remember the address and directions Devin gave us. Left turn one alley up from the biscuit stall. Two twists, three turns. House 19. Got it! The biscuit stall is just over there, Jack says, pointing to a booth with an elderly woman inside. We rush to the stall. I don't see or smell biscuits, but there are a ton of yummy-looking cookies. Where are the biscuits, Jonah asks, looking at the tray of cookies. Jack points at the table. Right there. Yum. Oatmeal raisin, my favorite. Huh? Jonah asks. Those are cookies, not biscuits. Oh, wait. Here cookies are called biscuits, I explain, like soccer is called football. Oh, Jonah says. Well, those are the most delicious looking biscuits I've ever seen. Can we buy some? I snort laugh. He is really trying to impress Jack. You want oatmeal raisin cookies? Seriously, you hate cookies with raisins. And anyway, I have exactly five gold coins with me. We need to get Prince back. Right, forget the cookie biscuits, Jonah exclaims, his cheeks turning red. I glance to the left. There's the correct alleyway. Let's go, Jack says. Number 19 will be around the curve to the right, to the left again, and then three more right curves. He leads the way down the cobblestone alley. I would not want to ride my bike on this road. Way too bumpy. The houses are very narrow and made of black stone. 
The street curves and curves, and finally there's a number 19. Hurrah! I just hope Prince is here and that he's okay. <sighs> I take a deep breath and run up to the door and knock. Ruff, ruff, ruff. I hear Prince. Phew. The trader opens the door a crack. I can see a gold chain keeping the door latched. I expect Prince to come rushing out to us, but I don't see him. Hi, we have your gold coins, I tell Devin. Where's Prince? Sorry, Devin says, but I changed my mind about the trade. Excuse me? You, you can't do that, I shout. I just did, Devin snaps. I love animals and want to keep Prince, so if you want him back, you'll need to trade a different animal for him. No fair, Jonah yells. Yeah, a deal's a deal, Jack adds. The trader shrugs. I didn't sign a contract, so I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. Do you want your dog back or no? Devin asks. Of course we do, I say, glaring at him. Fine, then trade me another animal for him. But not just any animal. Huh? Jonah asks. I want the goose that lays golden eggs, Devin says, his eyes gleaming. Jack's mouth drops open. I glare at Devin. How do you know about the goose? All giants have, pet, have geese as pets, he says. Duh. There's no way that's true. How do you even know about the giant in the first place? I ask, folding my arms across my chest. Stop asking me so many questions, Devin says. I have a headache. You deserve a headache, Jack snaps. You're not being fair to Abby and Jonah. Devin sighs. Sorry, children, but sometimes deals change. Like now. This is so wrong, I say. Tough. The goose for the dog, Devin says, then slams the door in our faces. Which means we have to go back to the giant's castle. And Magnus is probably pretty upset about his bag of gold coins that went missing. A sleeping giant I can deal with. I'm not so sure about an angry one. So chapter 10 is called Giants Are People 2. I'm interested to see what happens in that chapter 10.